What's going on guys, Busy Rider here back with another video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing something to the Z that I've been needing to do, but I've been putting off for a while. Since it's cold outside and we've had this big snowfall down here in Ohio, um, I'm not driving a car anywhere, but I figure I might as well go ahead and do this now because I need to have it done. The issue that I'm having right now is the horn does not work on the car, except for whenever you use like the key fob, that's the only way that the horn works. And through process of elimination, I've just determined that the clock spring is bad on the car. When I bought the car, it already had aftermarket steering wheel on it. So whoever put the steering wheel on, they obviously have broke that clock spring. That's what is used to be able to do the horn and all the audio controls and cruise control and all that stuff. Since mine's a base model, it does not have cruise control, but I will be retrofitting cruise control on here, or I pretty much already just about have done that. The only thing is I just gotta add the audio controls in. So that way, once I get my tune, I will be able to adjust things um, using the cruise control switches like how you're supposed to. I already ordered a clock spring. I ordered this like last year when I bought the car. I ordered it off of eBay. I don't even remember how much it was. Um, I just know that it was cheaper off eBay versus like Rock Auto or someplace like that. Definitely cheaper than going to the dealership. We'll go ahead and get inside the car and get this process started. I'm not looking forward to it because I can't stand taking apart interior trim. Fingers crossed nothing breaks and I'm just really ready to get my horn back on the car I mean it's it's honestly like a safety hazard too because I swear like so many people want to try to cut me off or whatever let's go ahead get started with this first things first since we will be kind of operating on something that includes the airbag system I do have an aftermarket steering wheel so I don't have a airbag on the driver's side we're still going to go ahead and disconnect the negative terminal of the battery just to make sure that everything's dead if you guys still have an airbag on your car make sure you disconnect the battery leave it unplugged for about 30 minutes minimum before you start working on it or you could do steps of like pressing the horn a couple times holding the brake you know flipping your lights and stuff like that while the battery's unplugged just to, just to drain out any residual electricity that's in the system stored in capacitors and things that way I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my battery and then I'll meet you guys on the inside all right guys so here we are inside the car I'm just gonna act like I'm trying to start it just to discharge any residual stuff. Beep, 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 beep. That's what we're trying to get to happen after this is done. You just wanna make sure that you get your steering wheel straight um, because we will be having to take off the steering wheel to get to the clock spring, which is behind all this stuff. Your light control switch, as well as like your blinkers and all that, those are attached to the clock spring, which is like I said, behind all this. Let me just go ahead and get my wheel off just to make it a little easier to kind of show you guys. So, I mean, having a quick release does make this a little bit easier, but I still will have to take all of this stuff off. I know that there are a few screws, which I get light now here. There are some screws down here, and this to remove, there's four of them, as well as having to get the steering wheel hub off. And hopefully we could just gently pry on the plastic and this will come off. I've, I've not removed one of these before, so this is gonna be a first time for me type thing. But hopefully this works out pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take off, like I said, my quick release hub, take all this stuff off and we'll get started. Alright guys, so inside here, this is where your steering wheel hub nut is. You can use an impact to take it off or I think it's like a 19 millimeter socket. All right guys, so if you have a quick release steering wheel or aftermarket steering wheel to take your hub off, sometimes you might have to put your steering wheel back on and like just yank on it and wiggle it and stuff like that like I just did. It doesn't have like the screws on it so that way you can just put a steering wheel puller on it. All right guys, so this piece right here, this is part of the clock spring. This clip right here that I pulled out, this goes to like your horn. If you don't have cruise control options or audio control options, you know, this is what controls that. So if you have like your cruise control is not working, your audio functions aren't working, that's like a telltale sign that your clock spring is bad. These things are only supposed to spin so far as you can see with this one, it just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning um, in both directions. So that's how I know that this thing's broken. It should eventually stop, but it just wants to keep spinning. 
I want to loosen up the screws that's underneath here. We can separate this and then be able to get this clock spring. Um, I saw some videos where they had to drop like this lower part of the dash down. I really don't want to do that, but if we have to, we will. like this top portion which you might as well say your speedometer and all that your gauge cluster in order to get that off of like this trim piece out of your way loosen up there's four 10 millimeter bolts there's two on this side as you can see i got them taken out there's like one there one there and then on this side you can see where they're missing out at you gotta take those off so that way you'll be able to lift your gauge cluster out the way to be able to get to the top of the clock spring to take off the stuff that you need from there so now i know that there's like a tab up here on top of this whatever let me just show you what a new clock spring looks like so this right here this is my new one as you can see on the top there's like this little locking tab that you gotta push these two tabs in and or pull out the top portion and then there's also a few connection points um, there's two two wires down here this is actually kind of easier than i thought it would be i have an 04 350z i'm not sure if the later models are different but i did have to pull this um, little panel down it wasn't difficult at all get you one of these like you know trim piece tool i got this set off of amazon i guess i could leave you guys a link in the description but yeah this was pretty cool just to get in there when you're pulling this portion off this lower portion just take your time so that way you guys don't break anything here it is right here there i can show you the four screw holes there's one two three and then the lever for the tilt of the steering wheel you gotta move that down then there's another screw in there and then just be real gentle like kind of pull down a little bit then you can get your trim tool and try to separate these pieces um, then there's also like over by your ignition switch you gotta get this little guy out here too i think that's why i was struggling why it wasn't coming apart but pop this out and then that bottom piece will come down then like i said those four screws for this for your um gauge cluster then you can get it out also oh there's a screw there fill screw there fill screw there and that's what's holding it onto the steering column so i'll put this back up on the tripod and continue disassembling this success we got it out all right guys so on some of the videos i've seen on your clock spring like there was normally something off the old one that you would have to transfer over to your new one but it looks like both of these clock springs look identical so i don't think i have to transfer anything over but i do have to transfer over of course my uh, my combination switches in which when you remove these there's like two pinch tabs on the uh, top and bottom of this white plastic piece you will pinch those in and pull it out um, i left the one inside installed for the uh, for the wipers because there was another connector there and i didn't feel like i'm doing it <clears throat> but yeah we'll go ahead and put this new clock spring on that's the old one it should be fairly the same thing just reverse order guys so now we have the clock spring installed this actually has been a lot 
simpler than I thought it would be. A few little things I want to go over real quick. After you have this installed, there is like this little retaining plastic trim piece on here that you would take off. What that is for, so while you're installing this, this doesn't rotate around on you and just break like how the one that we just replaced was. Also guys, if you look here too, there's like this white dot here on the 12 o'clock position, or you should have it about 12 o'clock. Um, that should line up with this notch right here on your steering wheel hub. Also, at least in my case, because I have an aftermarket steering wheel, there's a dot right here that you want to line up with that mark as well on the back that should also line up that notch up there should also line up with this here your clock spring we don't need this anymore but if you guys want to buy it 300 buy it now but get your wires for your airbag through your hub this is also when you want to plug in this doodad because this is what's going to make my horn work boom just like that Cool. All right, guys, so we have the steering wheel back assembled. Clock spring has been replaced. Last thing that we have to do is reattach the battery, the negative terminal. I just want to have my horn back. Like, how am I supposed to, you know, run people and, you know, do the boop, 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 and there's no horn. I mean, you know, uh, if somebody's in my way trying to, you know, cut me off, you know, I got to use my horn to, you know, give them the business. Yeah, um, I'm excited and nervous at the same time. This is sacred, it's a 10 millimeter, can't lose this, but. All right guys, battery's hooked up again. Now it's the moment of truth. It, it's gonna work, I don't know why I'm being all nervous and stuff like that. I don't know if the car will have to be on or not before I could just. Yo! Cool! I'm the man. Cool, we got a working horn now. Who would think that having a horn working on your car would just make you so excited and geeked out? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy right now, I'm happy. Y'all just gotta bear with me, give me this moment, okay? Cause it's been very annoying driving this without having the horn, but we got a working horn now. That is what's up. So guys, like I said, we are going to call this a success. The Z has its horn back. I can have horns coming from the front of the car as opposed to the back out that trumpet. I mean, out the exhaust system. Guys, I'm hoping that you found this video entertaining and very informative. I know when I looked this up before, I thought that replacing that clock spring was going to be a nightmare and a complete pain. Honestly, it was not as bad as I thought it would be. If we go on a difficulty scale of 1 to 10, I'll say that this was probably about a 3 to a 4. Only reason why I'm giving it that is if you guys know the interior of the 350Z is extremely cheap. It's, it's very cheap. I was nervous the whole time of breaking something. Like I said, I have an 04. I don't know if the later models are any different, but on mine, it was it was simple, honestly. And then also have an aftermarket steering wheel. If I had the factory steering wheel, it would have been a few more steps involved. Due to the fact of removing the factory airbag, you need some um, tamper-proof Torx bit sockets remove the airbag and things like that and the clips. If you guys are going to attempt this yourselves, just take your time. You don't need that many tools. You'll need basic hand tools and you'll be able to do this. This was pretty simple. I'll leave a link in the description of one that you can find. Let's say I bought this one on eBay. Yes, I was a little skeptical of it working because the price was so cheap. I think it was like $20 or something like that, $20, $30. I don't remember because it's been so long ago since I bought it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on IG. You guys know, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.